There are three easy steps in creating your resume link. Let me show you how. Step 1. Register. Go to www.jobs180.com using any browser and click register now. Fill out all the information needed. In choosing your resume link, use your full name so that it looks professional and it's easy to recall by potential employers. For example, Antonio Juan de la Cruz, the jobs180.com. Step 2. Create and design. When creating your resume, make sure to complete your personal information and upload your profile picture. One of the highlights of the resume link is the portfolio section. In the portfolio section, you can show off your skills by uploading samples of your work like documents, pictures, videos, and your social media links. Your resume link also features different themes and you can upload a cover photo. This is a combination of a cover letter and a social network cover photo. Here is an example. You can also download a copy of your resume link and print it. Step 3. Apply for a job. There are many ways to apply with your resume link. First is browsing the job recommendations in your Jobs180 dashboard. If you are qualified, click Submit Resume Link. So what are you waiting for? Dress up your next generation resume, stand out brightly among the competitive job seekers in the market, and win the heart of your future employers using Resume Link. Good morning everyone, welcome to Responsible Netizenship webinar titled Think Before You Click. We are live today at Ariellana University. So today we will be joined by speakers from um, Accenture and Makati Medical Center. But before we start, may we invite everybody to join us for the prayer followed by the National Anthem and the Ariellana Hymn.
mga kababayan ang pambansang awit ng Pilipinas. Ayang For that, everyone. So to officially start today's session, we'd like to invite Ms. Mildred Pangan, our GCRPM Supervising, Supervising Guidance Counselor for Aralian University. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our responsible netizenship, Think Before You Click webinar. In today's digital world, the internet provides us the open space to connect with other people, gather and share any kind of information through online. While this technology makes our life easier, people tend to abuse this powerful tool by not using it properly. And during this pandemic, the number of social media users increases because almost everything now is done through online. Majority of our time is spent using the net for work, online classes, and leisure activities. Almost everyone now has social media accounts like Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And from these platforms, we can easily access any kind of information. Unfortunately, there are times that what we see online is no longer helpful and beneficial to us. Thus, it is important that we should become responsible netizen because our actions online could affect our lives. Being a responsible netizen means using technology safely, knowledgeably, and appropriately. 
Think before you click is a healthy reminder to all netizens to become responsible when using internet. A simple post online can reach a huge amount of audience. That is why it is always better to think first before posting and responding to anything online. Avoid posting anything that is offensive and can cause harm to a person. Be careful of what you share. Comments, social media posts, photos, and anything else you share and see online is not guaranteed to be protected from online predators, hackers, and scammers. Likewise, double-check first before reposting any news article. Fake news is very rampant nowadays. It is actually one of the most common issues we are encountering on social media. These are posts that are meant to provide wrong and misleading information. So, before sharing new, any news article, always check if the source is credible. Not everything posted or published online is true. Before believing or sharing, dig deeper. Verify the information if it is really authentic and updated. Search for facts. Just because it's written online doesn't mean it's true. And of course, we should always be respectful. Avoid initiating a fight and spreading negativity online, especially nowadays wherein a lot of people are experiencing difficulties and challenges. They go online because they want to learn, relax, and enjoy. Avoid, ex avoid cyberbullying too. Filter your comments, especially if it is hurtful and degrading. Instead, show inspiration, love, kindness, and motivation with your posts and comments. By doing this, we are also making the internet and social media a safe place for everyone. Indeed, the digital world is an amazing place with lots to offer. So, we should not forget the etiquettes when using the internet, social media, and other online platforms. Every netizen has the responsibility to behave properly online. When you are in doubt if what you are going to post or share is safe, always remember this acronym THINK. T. Is this true? H. Is this helpful? I. Is this inspiring? N. Is this necessary? And K. For. Is this kind? So, think before you click. Thank you and have a nice day to everyone. Thank you for that, Ms. Mildred. So, to our audience today, we'd like to know where you're from. So, please comment your name and strand or course in our comment section so we know where you're from. And then, please tag your classmates so they can know that the event is starting. And um, please be advised that there is an evaluation form at the end of the event to make sure of your attendance. So, at the end of the event, saka natin i-release yung evaluation para sa attendance natin. All right, so um, here is our schedule for this morning. Number one, a first topic is respectful and mindful social media use or social media security from Accenture and how to spot fake news to be presented by Makati Medical Center. Yeah. So thank you, thank you, thank you for those who are here on time. Again, please tag your classmates and tell them that the event is ongoing now. They have to watch now. Okay, so let's go to our first speaker. Our first speaker is Sir Ariel Trimidal, Security Team Leader, Team Lead for Accenture, and he has nine years of experience in security industry, whose work revolves around malware researching, reversing, incident response, monitoring, and digital forensic. Sir Ariel is also a part of many advanced technical teams, including cyber defense services in APCP Philippines, cyber investigation, forensic and response, CIFR Triage Philippines, and leading one of the internal project, leading one of the internal projects of Accenture for the past three years, and one of the youngest technical leads in ATCP at the current age of twenty-eight. Sir Ariel, if you're ready, please join us. 
Hi, good morning. Hi, sir. Good Hi. morning. Ayan. Hi, Hi, good sir. morning, everyone. So today, po, we are joined by different um different um students coming from AU. So we have people from senior high, and we also have people from the college level, po. Ayan. Hi. So, sir, I can see your screen. It's up. So, um, you can start your presentation, and after which, I will do the Q and A, po, coming from our audience. So, sir oh. Ariel, the floor is okay. yours. Have fun, po. Thank you. Hi, thank you. Uh, hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, nice to meet you, uh, to be with you this morning. No? By the way, since my time is limited, so uh, try to list down all your questions and ping me after uh, this presentation. So, okay, so let's uh, get to it. Next slide, please. Okay, so in a quick 10 second energizer, no, I want everyone to think about uh, your perspective or interpretation on this picture. So with a tag on it, like in social media. Okay. Okay, so maybe some of you sees uh, what I've saw before, you know? So the mirror represent uh, virtual world, the apple uh, represent the personality or an individual, and the reflection represent virtual world into, uh, you're into, and like displaying yourself as what you want uh, everyone to know, no? Uh, which in reality, uh, there's much more than meets the eye, right? So next slide, next slide, please. Okay, so let's take a look on this picture again and let's see or let's read some of the comments here. By the way, this was a meme photo from internet three to four years ago. So let's see some of it and check if this if you guys have the same idea on these comments, no? So uh, from, from Kong Raijo, uh, people like your post, but no one cares. True, right? From Akosi Doggy Bao, how uh, I dress when in the call? True then, no? Um, let's have more. Alex uh, Godzilla, easy to pretend, decent with words and touching image. Again, true. Um, from Donalyn, uh, words are monitored, image are not verified. Moreover, it's easier said than done. And for Delilah, don't believe everything you see on in social media. And last one, uh, Ivana Alawit, everyone's are drawn to shared interests, problems, and individual life's energy. No? True again, no? Um, if you think about it, no social media is such a, uh, I mean, such as Facebook, Twitter, Discord, our platform utilizing communication, interaction, sharing contents, no, and information, uh, as it take advantage to lure uh, everyone to use it, no, right? So, for example, I watched TikTok last uh, sometime last week. Uh, it was about Filipino uh, in an earthquake situation. So. In the US, everyone duck cover and hold, right? Typical, smart move. Um, but in the Philippines, when an earthquake hits, everyone is looking around, putting uh, their mobile uh, phone out, start recording, uh, posting it online. And it pay malapet with the caption, keep safe, guys. There's an earthquake, help emoji, cry, cry, cry. No? So holding his phone instead of covering himself. So Reality check, diba? Uh, someone left on the call or, or guilty, no? So social media is like a super highway of information for from uh, personal information, sharing, and business agenda. So fun fact, uh, on top of that, uh, these, uh, some of these platforms are decided to be addictive, no? taking advantage of our reward system in the brain no? that affects decision and sensation. So which uh, some experience, uh, someone experienced something rewarding on our brain, uh, dopamine uh, level rise, no? When uh, someone gets notified, such as like, mention, tag, uh, they, the brain receives a rush of dopamine cause, the, cause us to feel pressure, no? Hold, uh, doing social media thing. Next slide, please. So if you will look to this graph uh, survey conducted by uh, statistica.com uh, last year, October 21, these are the top social media platforms on or so search uh, engines in the world. No? 
uh, these are in millions. So we have here uh, the top one, which is the Facebook having 2.1 billion active users per month, uh, followed by YouTube, uh, Instagram, and so on. So come to think about it, no? it is one of the perfect platform for threat actors or individuals to uh, deploy their malicious intent because uh, most likely one of these platforms is already installed uh, in your device, right? So one good malicious scheme will probably victimize thousand or more, diba? So with these numbers, it will have a high chance of probability that this malicious act will succeed. So, so that's why cybersecurity come into place, no? Okay, uh, next slide, please. For the first part, uh, we'll be talking about the concern involving uh, security, uh, cybersecurity for social media. So next slide, please. So these are the top, but not limited to. So concern or issue on social media security. So these are act, uh, as vulnerable platform to be exploited by hacker or uh, for the uh, organization for money. So we have here the data privacy, data mining, third-party application, malware, and threats. No? Next slide, please. So start with data privacy. Yo. User personal uh, information being shared publicly on social media, which can cause someone to access information without uh, permission or privacy breach. So basically, these are the built-up information you build up on social media, including your uh, ad names, um, home address, mobile numbers, email address. For some, it looks like nothing were, uh, wrong sharing this information, right? But if you will think about the scenario that might use this information, uh, you will be scared. No? This, uh, like for example, everyone is using uh, platform Lazada, right? Shopee, Grab, Panda, right? Familiar, yes? Tambay na Lazada, suki ng Shopee, no? If you think about it, these imports are very, uh, uh, this in information here is being used by their seller to ship their items, food uh, to, to the customer, no? Which also display, uh, which also you might dis uh, display on your social media accounts, no? And can be installed without your knowledge or uh, they can order something with your information. So that's what you call yung familiar sa atin, fake bookings, no? If you, uh, which most of our delivery riders are being victimized, no? If you, if someone hated you or someone told you uh, by just looking on your public information uh, online, this can be easily done, no? So if you didn't protect basic information like this, uh, it can be the next victim of fake booking. Okay, next slide, please. So, the next one is data mining. It's the same with the what we are talking about data privacy, which leveraging your personal profile without your knowledge. So data mining basically use data gathered information such as account, I mean such as uh, public information, age, habits, like, dislike, to persuade you for doing something in future. So not just by buying stuff, no, but for uh, it can also use for targeted advertisements. So this information can be shared third for third-party analytics for prediction and worse in uh, black propagandas. No, uh, one of the good example of this is uh, when Facebook admits data mining firm got access to millions of user personal information. So, if you still remember, this was happened last March 2018 when uh, Facebook admits millions of uh, data from U.S. user shared to Cambridge Analytica. So a company especially in uh, profiling that allowed them to predict voting like good uh, in an individual based on the personality. So this Cambridge Analytica uh, company helps uh, the voting campaign that year. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so third-party application is the same uh, with data mining, but with addition or uh, with additional. So most of the application now, nowadays no, uh, ask permission from user to access personal information such as uh, contact, picture, uh, current uh, geographic location uh, before installing. No, 
some of these applications uh, which are running in the background might download malwares uh, from your phones or a smart device without you, uh, without your knowledge. So let's take a look uh, on this picture on the Instagram. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if you can see it, but uh, see the authorization request uh, that uh, they ask a user before in installation. So this is the third party app from Instagram allowing you to uh, uh, manage some uh, information to, to Instagram. So they might use, again, the targeted ads or something you really don't know uh, what it's asking. You might already agree to install application in the background. No? OK, next slide, please. So let's look more deeper on this uh, privacy policy. OK, so first, let me ask a quick question. No? When was the last time you checked your check on this privacy policy or have you heard or seen a privacy policy before no uh in my in the in the screen uh this is a sample of uh agreement from user and the game developer before ins uh, installation of uh play games so this is from facebook and if you want to play uh, i mean play some games on Facebook, uh, they have the check button that you need to agree before playing the, the game it's, itself. So I'm be reading some of the comments, I mean, the highlighted on the picture. So information collection and use. So we may require you to provide us with a certain person, uh, personality identifiable information. So generic, so walang specific on yung gusto kuhain, no? And the next line, the app does use third-party service that may collect, uh, collect information used to identify you. So major big. And uh, the third highlighted one, the lag may include information such as device, uh, internet protocol, IP, uh, IP address, device name, and operating system. So when you're installing those uh, app third plus uh, third-party application you are agreeing that they will get your information uh before you if, before you play on that uh game okay so next slide please okay so for the next concern uh these are the most uh dangerous form uh uh form uh na malware ka or act to get infected by these malwares so the attacker often use malware to hijack social user credential, most likely to impersonate them. No, uh, sometimes they open uh, with this sequence. No, uh, click baits, malicious tagging, cross sites, uh, request forgery, mobile application, then social engineering. So let's start with the click bait. So it's a text or a thumbnail link uh, that, that designed to attract attention, and it is used for uh, to follow the link and to view it, to view to view them, no. Uh, being typical, decisive, or I mean deceptive, sensational, and misleading. So from my example I get from Facebook, it always shows some per some personality, you know, sometimes blurred your picture uh, with the caption like uh, si Chris Aquino patay na. Of course, uh, with the curios your curiosity. You you know you want to more uh, to know more about it uh, and and uh, clicking uh, even though you are not sure what you are ending up. No, by the way, hindi pat uh, patay si Chris. Uh, my wife said kagabi, so don't uh, click those. So fake news. And uh, the next one is malicious tagging. As uh, so I've mentioned uh, earlier, people like to be notified, tag or uh, like. So those behavior behaviors were easily exploited by attackers. Who already infected? No, so since it was tagged with you by your friends, by your relatives, uh, or person you you have known, so it can be easily de deceive you with the links, and end up you get uh, both infected and probably uh, your machine or device is one of the many sources of spreading the malicious link. Okay, so for the next one is the cross site uh, request forgery. So. Some of you may not heard of it. To simplify, to describe it, it's just every time you log in, 
in your any accounts online uh, our browser uh, produce this what you call cookies session or something uh, that uh, will uh, uh, active transaction no with the active transaction in your browser uh, to your uh, target website so uh, on the other tabs because you are uh, surfing internet if you click some malicious link and you went on this malicious page uh, they this page can uh, execute um, malicious script that will um, install your current transaction on your current uh, the other tabs no so without you knowing because it's hidden on the background so this might change your password, uh, change your uh, email address, and worse, if you are logged into uh, mobile banking, uh, they can make banks transfer without you knowing. No? And the next one is mobile application. It's the same with the third-party application, uh, which allow this uh, application to be installed in your computer without uh, reading permission requests. Uh, on mobile, it's much easier for malware to pop up. No? Uh, you, uh for and for you likely to click it uh, for example uh if if there's something you click malicious they're gonna pop up uh and tell you this device is infected and uh you need to install antivirus you, know, you need to install this etc no and then the last one is a social engineering or social engineering is a act of uh exploiting human weaknesses to gain uh, personal information to protect system no I am in I am protected system. So social engineering relies on manipulating individ individuals rather than hacking the system. Now, one good example of this I've experienced is uh, when my friend uh, created a post on social media asking for financial support, no? so for health conditions. So she told me that many people is calling them. No? So I call good, okay, yan, uh, to call. Uh, but eventually we found out that, that those callers are scammer. No? Uh, claiming that they are from the SWD, PGH, RegCos, and other government agency. No, the reason why we identify them is no one in a good contention will ask personal information, uh, asking for bank accounts details with password and your current GCash uh, balance. No, because he knows the GCash account. Niya dun eh. And uh, she's, she got more of that kind of messages. So he, he avoided that good thing. So that's one of uh, good example of social engineering use uh, using public available information you posted online. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so for the second part, we'll be uh, talking about the risks and challenges involving cybersecurity on social media. So I've mentioned uh, that more and more is using social media. Uh, so are the risks. So next slide, please. So these are the top, uh, but not limited to. Uh, there is involving uh, cybersecurity on social media. So uh, identity tip, tip uh, uh, cyber scam, whistleblower, cyber stalking, bullying, cyber propaganda, and fake news. Next slide, please. So identity tip, tip no, uh, it's not new in uh, criminal, uh, criminal activity. No? In fact, uh, it's been around for years. No, for, from biblical uh, times, uh, from early days of credit cards, 1940s, and even this uh, time of pand pandemic, no, which changed the way people shop and transfer money. So identity theft happened when someone steal your personal information, such as online accounts, bank, social work uh, uh, accounts, to commit fraudulent activity. And what's new is the method uh, for criminal uh, are using to part people from their uh, sensitive information. So from pay, uh, accounts or for, uh, for, uh, or what we call poser, stealing public uh, available information, photos of an individual then posting uh, it on their fake accounts. So, so yun yung isang sample. The worst kind is using this information to take someone or, or some organization to solicit frauds, no? Okay, so um one of the good experience uh i had is when my wife friend so my wife friend is a public uh, school principal so he was victimized by identity identity theft no 
uh, loaning uh, amounting to 300k from the government map no so yung 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 information niya uh, possibly nagamit yung public uh, Facebook public account niya kasi exposed yung information niya doon eh so isa yung sa possible way kung paano nakuha yung mga information niya syempre medyo medyo old na si ma'am tapos hindi niya alam yung pagmamalis ng Facebook so lahat tak exposed no next slide please okay so cyber scam so uh, i gave sample uh, earlier and these are the others so cat phishing yo uh, is the act of creating false identity online so in hope for luring someone into a romantic relationship so typically uh, the catfish will create fake profile and using someone photos and personal details so after a week they, they will tell you they they have some financial hardship then sabihin la din magpagamot ni lola then uh, like i can breed i need money no and starting making requests no don magingkin ng, ng pera and so on and so forth then after the transaction they disappear no then quizzes another scam that exploit human curiosity no uh, with the tag on the picture no mga mga ito nakikita ko sa uh, sila nakikita ko sa facebook uh, only 3% of human population can solve this only genius uh, i mean only for genius geniuses no since you know the answer and you already define yourself as one of those geniuses you will be you will answer the right question and often ask for more uh, by clicking something on that post so even the quiz is legitimate no picture lang na ganyan uh, legitimate naman so but if you click on the link on that particular uh, post you will usually agree to uh, to the site or terms of condition open uh, granting third party access to your social media profiles no so one of the good example is this is the uh, the earlier example of uh, uh, data privacy the uh, the Cambridge the uh, Cambridge Analytica scandal. So they created a quiz uh, that allow the the user to get their information. No, shortened URLs. No, in order to hide the pull malicious link uh, to the user, attackers may or disguise phishing links and malicious site by hiding their two URL. No, because yung ibang mga AD hindi na detect yung yung full URL. No, so like my example here on the picture. Uh, bt.com can transport full, full your link to the kind of shortened link it's not malicious no but it's a way for the the attacker to deceive you so more often uh, more often ginagamit yung mga ganitong links sa twitter no kasi di ba maliliit lang yung links so madaling makita and profile hijacking basically someone's uh, already stole your account information and use it to uh to take over your asset like banks and social media okay ne next slide please okay so one of the good example i mean whistleblower one of the good example of this is when a people or i mean employee posts about the company you no know, like uh, my boss uh, just lay off uh, 30 employees it will have as in a i mean serious public relation no? and uh, financial uh, consequence to the company so imagine uh, tesla nagsabi ng ganun nag nag, nag, nag lay off or one of the employee of tesla nag lay off sila ng natin, hundred of people so syempre yung mga stockholder uh, mga investor ng ano mag, magtataka no do sa do sa company na yon bakit ganun so it could be more uh, serious if the company is uh, a publicly owned no kasi yung reputation sa uh, na mala damage nung that post so yep that's the whistleblower next slide please okay so cyber stalking or bullying no it refers to harassment over internet or internet so cyber stalker harass victim on social media sending unpleasant and lewd message no so we have patay isa doxting no d o x i n g so an act of uh, revealing information from uh, uh, individual online so to blackmail or threaten to sell their account so so here in the philippines we have this law about uh, cyberbullying and 
uh, cyber, I mean, cyber stalking and cyber bullying, uh, wala siyang clear, ano eh, wala siyang clear line sa cyber law. Pero yung defamation, slander, libel, yan yung may mga, yun yung may uh, direct na uh, definition sa sa ano natin sa law. So, under the Crime Prevention Act of 2012, Republic Act num, uh, number 10175, no? So, there's a lot of elements for cyber libel, no? Mag, 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 sasabi nila ako ng iba. So, yung imputation done to the use of computer or similar means and some of uh, imputation to tend cause to dishonor or discredit no or to defame people online so yun yung mga uh, elements ng libel so marami pa siya no so one of the example of this uh, libel is Maria Risa kung kilala niyo siya siya yung Nobel Prize na from Rappler old Rappler website no so she was accused uh, by libel. Then Manny Pacquiao, the Shungi Sen, si Eng Chung Di. So yun yung mga libel na may mga case, no? Kasi usually pag ang mga nagpapayan ng libel yung mga ano eh, no? Yung may mga credibility online. I mean, mayong mayong pinoprotect ang pangalan, no? So the penalty for libel is from forty thousand to one point two million dito sa Pilipinas. So for the uh, for the imprisonment four years to six years. So in details, nasa, nasa lo na lang. Okay, so next slide please. Okay, so cyber propaganda or fake news. So fake news seems new, but the platform is the only new about it. No? Propaganda has been around centuries no? and internet is the only latest means of the communication to abuse and spread lies and mis information. So, fake news open into damaging reputation, personality, making money to add, uh, revenue. I will not uh, talk in details regarding this one. Uh, the next speaker will talk about it. Okay. Next slide, please. So, explore your account. I mean, so safety tips. So, for the safety tips, uh, explore your account, uh, setting privacy settings, No, learn about your privacy settings uh, on your social media site. This will help you to manage your private information to be private. No? Regularly check your mailbox, see if there's suspicious logging attempts. And logging history, yun yung isa sa mga gusto mong makita. No? This will help you to identify malicious activities on your accounts. No? Kung mayroon bang nag in. Kung nandito ka, usually nandito ka sa Manila, tapos may nag in the north or the south. No? Something suspicious and Kyo na yung para mag-change ka ng password. No? Unique password for each social media, basic thing. Kasi kapag na-crack na, na, na yung password mo sa isang account, most likely lahat ng social media mo ma-access ma din. Next one is keep your password strong with plus two-factor authentication or multi-factor authentication. So password, so means uh, something you know. So if a hacker knows about it, Yes, makakapag-log in sila. Pero kapag mayroon kang two-factor authentication or more, or multi-factor, like mobile, or something you have, no? so hindi kagad nila ma-access yung account mo kasi kailangan nila ng OTP. No? The next one is protect your system. I mean, protect your computer, mobile device, and tablets by a software update or OS update. No? Typical. So, in below, uh, uh, I I put it, the National Bureau of Investigation and uh, ACG or PNP, uh, PNP Anti Cyber Division Crime Group Anti Crime Group. Ito yung information nila. So if you feel na victimized ka ng libel or something na uh, na hack ka, feel free to to ping those guys. No, sila yung help sa atin para. Uh, Tulungan tayo sa problem. Okay? Next slide, please. Okay, so for the last slide, think twice and think it again before you post. Again, pag nag-post ka online, uh, it's hard for Facebook na to or Facebook or a lot of social media site na i-delete yung uh, na-post mo. Kasi isang simple screenshot lang yan habang buhay na sa internet. So don't click on suspicious link. 
if you are not sure don't click keep your personal info private no don't over share your information email address no personal mobile phones etc then be careful on overfriending uh, know how to block your unfriendly followers no kapag alam mong binubuli ka na online unfriend block no be the positive uh, uh, online reputation again um and do your research for fake news no do your research if you are not sure about this news most likely kailangan mo mag-research para i-validate 'yon and doon ka sa mga credible sources no and last link is uh, don't share your password yan next slide please okay so let's uh, take a look again on this picture for those who haven't think uh, their perspective earlier so uh, hopefully you have a good perspective on social media in general no everyone is uh, in social media is an editor a blogger a content creator a journalist on their own virtual identity we just need to be more, more careful on what we're sharing and what to consume okay okay uh, that's it um yeah learn more uh, about us on job uh, jobs 180.com slash accenture so we have some team to assist you that on that Oh, yeah. Thank you for that, Sir Ariel. Now we're up for Q&A. Sir, thank you. Ang, ang, ano po, ang siksik po yung talk ninyo. Ang dami ko pong nanote na, ano, na questions. <laughs> Ayan, so, thank you. Question number one. Ayan. Um, can we ask you how often you change your passwords? And if you regularly still use um, social media sites like Facebook? Uh, ano na personal questions? <laughs> Okay, okay. So how often I Okay. So how often I use uh, change my password every six months. Pero medyo mahaba kasi yung password ko, mga nasa 25 uh, jumbled letters. So yung half lang yung pinapalitan ko kasi may app niya i-memorize and uh, hindi siya same throughout my Facebook account. And dun sa next question mo is uh, do, do I use Facebook? Yes, I use all the social media accounts and for that intelligence and my uh, work. Pero again, uh, hindi lahat naka-expose. Okay, thank you for that, sir. Um, second question, Paul. Um, do you believe that um, excessive time on social media can influence political climate, um, stands on certain moral issues, um, race, religion, gender, um, sa tingin niyo po ba may impact po yung mga nakikita, nababasa, napopost sa um, other different sites po across all the sites? Sa, sa, especially sa climate natin ngayon. Uh, yeah, for me, no, um, it depends on who is consuming those information. But again, kung ako yung papa, kung ako yung tatanungin mo, since I know how to identify those uh, may malicious intent, by promoting black propaganda or or hindi yaman. so it depends on the people pero kung kung ikaw is being targeted by uh targeted of advertisement no yung targeted advertisement na sinasabi ko probably you you are the one that can be persuaded to do something na you know based on sa propaganda nila pero again everything you consume dapat you think about it no everything you read you said you you let's um you know that you need to research about it before you you consume it no? ayan, ayan. so thank you for that sir so to our audience baka may tanong kayo ihabol natin kay sir ariel dito para matanong natin sa kanya sir dalawang question pa ha um okay, number sure. number three question um uh asa na yun? um at this point um is it would you say that um sa Facebook sir or sa Twitter sir since these are um free quote unquote sites do you believe in the statement that use in using these sites sa in using those sites hindi yun yung hindi yun yung product yung users yung product yung parang if all of these things are free then possibly yung mga gumagamit yung product nila is that yes. does that make sense because yeah. I, I read it somewhere yeah. Yes. 
uh, in some way, yes, kasi meron nga yung, as I uh, mentioned earlier, no, uh, there's um, data mining, no? So, the, everyone on the social media is probably being profiled, no, based on your habits, uh, likes, or what you're doing in social media. So, which means your data is being utilized to uh, to make an advertisement and persuade you to buy these things. Yung gusto mong palaging binivisit. You, put, you went to Lazada, you check on those items, and eventually, everything on your on your browser, yun na yung lahat na nakapost. No? So that's the uh, general example of uh, how information of our, our information is being used. So yes, probably. No. Ayan, thank you for that, sir. So to our audience, alam alam niyo na yung sagot dun sa so ikaw ba yung product ganyan. Um, eto sir, last question. How about career advice? If there um in our audience, kasi sir um there are of various um college levels po. If there are people in our audience who wants to seek, take the same route as you in the um IT development, security, mga cyber ganyan, sir. Um. What would be your career advice to those people? Um, for me, the route kasi na ginawa ko is I went to technical for more than six uh, first uh, first five years of my career, no? Technical talaga. So what I mean by technical, uh, programming, uh, naglearn uh, about security talaga. And pag pumasok ka sa security, um. Uh, it's a ano eh, it's a uh, evolution or i mean yung learning kailangan palagi uh, ginag- ginagawa so first year mo yes matututo ka second year matututo ka until now i'm still re- learning and uh, it's a revolution no ng ng learning so dapat continuous ka nag-aaral continuous kang nagre-research and security is ano eh, evolving so, kailangan palagi ka nandun sa, sa trend. Alam mo kagad kung ano yung nangyayari. So, hindi ka pwedeng ma- ma- ma-lose track kung ano yung nasa landscape ng security. Ganon, every day. Every, every day, ganon, sa security. Ayan. So, thank you for that, sir. So, to our audience, if you wish to explore vacancy o- vacancies over at Accenture, the link is jobsunit.com slash Accenture. Ayan. So, to Sir Ariel, sir, we have a certificate for you. This is from the AU Guidance Office. Um, this certificate of appreciation is presented to Sir Ariel L. Trimidal for his invaluable contribution as a resource speaker in the webinar entitled Responsible Netizenship, Think Before You Click, given this 3rd of February 2022, signed by um, AVP of Student Personal Services, Ms. Fe Caridad Kay Correodica. Thank you, Sir Ariel, for joining us this morning. Po. And we hope you had fun, sir. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, we look forward, sir, to in- inviting you again in other talks. Po. Thank yeah. you, sir. Okay. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> Have a great day, po. Ayan. So, to our audience, wag kayo mahiya magtanong. Pwede kayo magtanong kasi pag nagtanong kayo, ipo-flash natin yan doon sa sa screen tapos ibabasahin natin sa ating um speaker. So if meron kayong clarifications or if you want something to be addressed, pwede niyo ilagay doon sa ating comment section. Ayan. So at uh, update ko lang pala kayo no. So to all of our viewers today, there is an evaluation link that you have to fill out after the event. So um yun yung attendance tracking natin. So if meron kayong kakilala na hindi nanonood ngayon at kailangan mag-attendance, please tag them and please share this video with them para hindi nila ma-miss out yung um webinar natin for this morning. Ayan. So let's go to our second presenter. Our second presenter to discuss um, how to spot fake news is Ms. Farah T. Vise, um, MSNRN from Makati Medical Center. Um, she is a nurse by profession and a licensed financial advisor and an entrepreneur. She is an expert clinician handling cases in medical surgical neuro 
Neurology, a graduate of Bachelor of Science in Nursing, BSN, in St. Louis University, Baguio, and she finished her Master's of Science in Nursing, major in Hospital Administration in La Concordia College, Manila. She is an active member of the Philippine Nurses Association and in various specialty organizations such as Association of Nursing Service Administrators and the Philippine Society for Parenteral and Enteral Nutrition. Currently, she served as a Senior Clinical Department Manager of the Maternity Services and Endoscopy Department under the Specialty Nursing Service of the Nursing and Patient Care Division of Makati Medical Center. Um, here to join us, Ms. Farah Vizay. Hello, hello, good morning. Hi, Ms. Farah. Good for morning. That kind of introduction, ang haba. Hello, <laughs> oh, <man, laughs> <laughs> Hello, good morning, good morning. Ma'am, can we test your share screen? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, there you go. Ayan. So, ma'am, um, you know the drill. So, I leave you, I leave you to it. So, you can um, present po, and then I'll be back for Q&A. So, have fun, ma'am. Okay. The stage is yours. Okay. Thank you. So, again, good morning, guys. I'm Farah Visay from Makati Medical Center, uh, Maternity Services and Endoscopy. So I'm here to present how to spot a fake news. But before we go to that, I would like to present to you our institution, the team we belong. Okay, so I will show you a video. So let's all watch this. This is the healthy normal. Patients receive safe and finest treatments. We are confident to go to checkups without worries or fear. We experience service that is from the heart. In Makati Medical Center, our patient safety is our top priority. Now is the time to take care of our health more than ever. No fear, no worries, because we are always safe in Makati Med. So, ayan, because we are always safe in Makati Med, we are inviting all of those incoming registered nurses, nursing assistant, medical technology, radiologic technology, pharmacies, respiratory therapists, and other allied healthcare to join our growing health, healthcare team. No? So, we also want you to access the jobs180.com slash Makati Medical Center. So, you are all welcome to be part of our uh, institution. So come and join us. So to begin the lecture proper, I will show you another video. So let's all watch this. With digital tools, it is easier than ever to create, edit, and publish your work to the world. But there's a cost. It's also easier than ever to spread misinformation, and fake news has become a real issue in recent times. We see this with students. According to a Stanford study, only 25% of high school students were able to identify an accurate news story compared to a fake one. Students also had a hard time distinguishing between real and fake photographs, as well as authentic and staged videos. Researchers use the words bleak and dismaying to describe this but it's not going away anytime soon. And that's a very real problem. So how do we fix it? 
Well, here's a five-step process that I've used with students. A word of caution, it's not perfect, and there are probably other models out there, but I thought I would share it just in case you might want to use it. We call it the five C's of critical consuming. Number one, context. Look at the context of the article. When was it written? Where does it come from? Have the events changed since then? Is there any new information that could change your perspective? Number two, credibility. Check the credibility of the source. Does the site have a reputation for journalistic integrity? Does the author cite credible sources? Is it satirical? Is it on the list of fake news sites? Is it actually an advertisement posing as a real news story? Number three, construction. Analyze the construction of the article. What is the bias? Are there any loaded words? Any omissions? Any propaganda techniques? Can you distinguish between the facts and the opinions? Or is it merely a bunch of speculation? Number four, corroboration. Corroborate the information with other credible news sources. Make sure it's not the only source making this claim. And if it is, there's a good chance it's not actually true. Number five, compare. Compare it to other news sources to get a different perspective. Find other credible sources from other areas of the ideological or political spectrum to provide nuance and get a bigger picture of what's actually going on. When we teach students media literacy and they learn how to consume critically, they learn how to think critically. And critical thinking citizens are good for democracy. And that, well, that's good for everyone. So more or less, that's the um, a summary of the lecture. So to go further, so I assume that most of us here have um, uh, active in different forms of social media, like sa FB, sa Twitter, sa IG, sa Snapchat, and all the like. No, in one way or another, we also experience or we did the um, repost, retweet. No, yung mga uh, familiar tayo with the word CTTO or credit to the owner. No. We also did the PTP, permission to post, no? Dinaririnig na rin natin yung recently, the trolls, clickbait, the hoax, the satire, or the parody. All these were related to our topic and some of them will be tackled later on. So fake news is nothing new. What is new is how easy it's become to share information for both the true and the, for, the false um, news on a massive scale. Everyone has heard this word but don't know what it really means. The question is, it is being used today's environment is something that we need to consider. We should understand the following, the background, the definition, the types, and the recommendation. So for the background, as we have said, it is not new in the history of mankind. False and distorted news material isn't exactly a new thing. It's been part of the media long before the social media since the invention of, print, of printing press. On the internet, headline forms called clickbait, which entice people to click or read more to try to shock them or amaze us. No? It is also used as Nazi propaganda, used by the Catholic Church in, 19, in 1755, even in 1800. So, matagal na nag exist ang fake news. So massive digital information is becoming pervasive, pervasive in online social, social media to the extent that it has been listed to the World Economic Forum as one of the main threats in our society. Social media platforms allow almost everyone to publish their thoughts, share stories, which, which are hard to distinguish the accuracy. Because of information evolution and adapted technology with the advent of social media, we can easily retrieve any data at any time and at any place. And we can publish piece of any, any, uh, any piece of it right away. The roles of the bots is also uh, a thing today, which accelerates both the false and the true news. The origin of the fake news date back before the printing press. Rumor and false stories have probably been around as long as humans have lived groups where power matters. News was usually transferred from person to person via word of mouth. In pa rin yan ngayon, yung mga marites natin, di ko sila pumapasok. So for the pre-printing press era, 
forms of writing inscribed on materials like stone, clay, and papyrus appeared several thousand, thousand years ago. Information was usually limited to the leaders only, like the emperors, pharaohs, incas, religious, and uh, military leaders. So they believe that knowledge is power those times. So how uh, we can imagine uh, those times that the person is really uh, limited when it comes to the uh, know, uh, in knowing what is fake news those times. No? So for the mass media era, in January 1926, Father Ronald Knox did a fake news called Broadcasting the Barricades on BBC News. Father Ronald broadcasted that London was being attacked by communists. Parliament was under siege, and the Savoy Hotel and Big Ben was big blown up. Uh, was blown, but has been blown up. So, dito siguro nag-start yung idea that the London Bridge is falling down. No, War of the World on the fake news was followed by Orson Welles' War of the Worlds that was broadcast in 1938. It was published 1898. Is about the science fiction Martian invasion that caused man, minor panic. In 1948, the Chicago Daily Tribune editors were so certain of the outcome of presidential election. So wherein they published that uh, between Truman and um, uh, President Truman and uh, do we defeats uh, do we defeats Truman? Where in fact uh, President Tr uh, Truman was the one uh, who won the presidential race. No, with this three fake news uh, fake news has existed for a long time that have ranged widely for um, uh, from amusement to death no so internet era in the late 20th century the internet provided news means for dissemination of fake news on a vastly increased scale some fake news websites were created in early years some of these hoax websites are satire Technological advances have increased the spread of information and democratized its consumption globally. Problem is, people don't check the source of material that they view online before sharing, which leads to fake news, spreading quickly like wildfire. The danger of this can cause conflict and negative impact. impact. Can, can be with your coworker, with your classmates, your, with your friends, with your relatives. Labeling sa, uh, something as fake news can also be a powerful weapon that that can discredit something uh, that can discredit other people's view. So for the definition of terms, fake news, purposely crafted, sensational, emotionally charged, misleading, totally fabricated. So uh, the intention of this is to elicit an emotion res emotion re emotional response uh, to shock to shock us or to anger us. Misinformation. False content that is unintentional, intentionally or knowingly disseminated. Ang sa Tagalog sublime, no? Not accurate. Disinformation. False content that is intentionally disseminated with intent to harm. We need to say pagpapakalat ng wrong information, makapanira. On purpose, dito pumapasok yung mga trolls. Lalo na ngayon, no? nauso-uso yung sa uh, sa um, politics natin, sa mga artista. No? So, naririnig na natin yan. So, for the fact check, fact check samples of fake news. No? So, give you one. So, uh, Mark Zuckerberg, dead at 32, denies Facebook has problem with fake news, the shoulder. So, dahil nga na-discuss na natin kanina, no, na hindi talaga tayo nag-read ng, uh, nag-dig into details on how to check uh, uh, fake and uh, truth news, no. So, ito lumabas din to before. So, ito pa, no, maka, ano, yung makatawag pansin na headline. Bistado, back account uh, ni Trillanes at relasyon ni Karen Davila. Pag gaganyan, di ba, ang mga marites talagang mabilis, no, para basahin. So, next. Leia Salonga gave a meaningful message to all Filipinos and la, uh, unite behind Duterte. So another one, the, uh, Pope yan, dapat, o, oh, di ba? Mali yung, ano, yung spelling. So sabi kanina dun sa ating video, we have to check for the correct spelling. So, no Francis reports that His Holiness has endorsed pre Republican President Candidate Donald Trump. Uh, originated with the fake news website nga ito. So last, is Duterte attracts more investor as Bill Gates invests 20 billion in the Philippines. Wow. Kung totoo man ito, baka wala na tayong utang. 
So, the types of fake news. So, for the manipulated content, this is when genuine information or imagery is manipulated to deceive. So, what are the examples of that? Yung mga nasa magazines, yung picture, or pag nasa Facebook tayo, ito yung uh, expectations versus reality. You know? Fabricated content. New content is 100% false, designed to deceive or do harm. So, ito ay isang klase ng disinformation. The satire or parody, no intention to cause harm but has potential to, to fool. I think these are the examples of memes no? uh, na nagagawang joke, na naglilit into joke. No? Misleading content, used to frame an issue or individual. So, ito, um, uh, deliberately, like hoax, propaganda, yung malayo talaga sa katotohanan. False connection, when genuine content is shared with false context, contextual information. Uh, so, yan. Imposter content. When genuine sources sources are impersonated. Ang sample nito, usually yung mga um, headlines, yung mga news uh, uh, news sites natin, yung mga bank sites natin. No? Nabanggit kanina ng, ano, ng first speaker, we really have to, to be careful on that. Diyan pumapasok yung mga clickbait. No? So, yan. So, what are the challenges to spot the fake news? So, syempre, uh, it depends on our bias or emotions, no? On how keen are we on reading to, to spot the correct or uh, wrong spelling, the, uh, on checking the credibility of the source, and the use of our common sense. So, before we go to the guidelines, so, um, ang sabi nga nila, the profilation, proliferation of the new sources and satire as well as is the speed of social media combined with reader short attention spans and tendency to just read the headlines make us all fall to fake news so paano natin maiiwasan yon so the canada's national observer gave us a five step on how to spot the fake news not only them but there are so uh, so many uh, resources uh, on giving guidelines on how to spot the fake news but more or less, they are uh, all the same. No? Number one, confirm the source. Check the above page. Check the author. Look for the byline. Is this verified? Check the facts. Check the facts. Check horizontally and not only vertically. Meaning to say, check for other sources, which is which uh, uh, nabanggit then during the um, video kanina. No? Check for the for the sources. At the same time, uh, Andiyan naman si Google, no? So, you, we have to use the Google search engine. The quality counts. So, for the quality counts, check supporting sources. Check the date and the spelling and the reliability of the information. So, read before you share. Nabanggit kanina ng first speaker, uh, think before you click, no? So, kailangan talagang uh, nakita na natin kung ito ba ay talagang ka-share-share, no? And then lastly, speak up. Speak up meaning to say we have to use our common sense, no? As the ex the experts, check for the purpose of the news. So this the infographic uh, infographic available in the internet. We can always uh, download this, no? Uh, in guiding us on how to spot spot a fake news. So so far we have uh, discussed how to spot a fake news, the dangers of fake news, uh, for the fact checking websites there are there are many fact checking websites no we can also uh, we can use the wikipedia the fact surveyor uh, the fact.org so, so many uh, organization for the fact checking websites we can always check on that to validate so for the recommendation on uh, checking what is fake and what is the fact uh, it is time to make a change sabi nga nila so for the recommendation based on the guidelines that was given, no, that were given, check the headline, check the source, check the source and check for the author. Check for the supporting sources and the date, check the spelling. It is a joke, ask the the expert. If something is suspicious, that do some digging. Don't take images of face value. Let's not move into the world in which we are not only fail to speak the truth, but in which we are not even to discern the truth. So with that, I will uh, give you the um, posted uh, posted uh, from Francis Kong. It takes a lot to, more work today to distinguish news, facts, opinion, and made-up stories. Practice due diligence and critical thinking to seek the truth. A philosopher said tests for the truth that must be applied. 
logical consistency, empirical adequacy, experiential relevance. Usually, the more dramatic and controversial the headline is, the more we need to do research to seek out the truth. It is wise not to just pass on unverified information to others. Don't believe everything that you read on the internet just because there's a photo with the Pope next to me. With that, thank you so much. Thank you for that, Ms. Farah. So to our audience, the floor is now open for questions. If you have questions for Ms. Farah, now would be a good time. So uh, Ms. Farah, I listed a couple of questions lang po. If you have time, would it be okay? So question number one. Um, how has fake news impacted the medical industry or the landscape? Um, especially, we have a lot of misinformation. Ganyan po. Do you hear me, ma'am? Do you hear me, Pa? Miss Farah? Ms. Farah, can you hear me? So while waiting for the, the host, I think you can post your question. Uh, I, I hope I can answer your, I don't know, your question sa aking ano, makakaya. <laughs> answer natin yan. So while waiting also, we would like to, uh, do you hear, ma'am? No. I cannot. Ah, uh, hang on po. Ms. Shali, I cannot hear you. Do you see me, ma'am? Do you see me po? No. Um, baka it's... Um, can you stop sharing, ma'am? Naka-stop sharing na po kayo. Ah, love internet ata ni Miss Farah. Stop share ako. For a while, guys. Can we try again po, Miss Fire? Can you hear me now? Hi. Hello. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I can hear you with the other phone, but not. Pero ma'am, I can hear you. Kita ko po kayo and dinig ko po kayo. Can you refresh, ma'am? Ah, okay. So, so, paano? Okay. So, siguro I can use this phone na lang, no? Refresh, okay. Yes, ma'am. That's fine po. If you hear, if you hear me po. Okay. I think Miss Farah just um refreshed her screen. So, to our audience, again, again, um, um, there's an evaluation after the event. And if you wish to explore vacancies over at Makati Medical Center, the link is available, jobswinikicom slash Makati Medical Center. Um, if you wish to look at the other vacancies that are available for um, Ariana University and your partners, it's available naman sa schools.jobswinikicom slash AU. Yeah. So for um, while we are experiencing technical glitches, we will be playing a short commercial. There are three easy steps in creating your resume link. Let me show you how. Step 1. Register. Go to www.jobs180.com using any browser. And click Register Now. Fill out all the information needed. In choosing your resume link, Use your full name so that it looks professional and it's easy to recall by potential employers. For example, Antonio Juan de la Cruz at jobs180.com Step 2. Create and Design When creating your resume, make sure to complete your personal information and upload your profile picture. One of the highlights of the resume link is the portfolio section. In the portfolio section, you can show off your skills, 
by uploading samples of your work like documents, pictures, videos, and your social media links. Your resume link also features different themes and you can upload a cover photo. This is a combination of a cover letter and a social network cover photo. Here is an example. You can also download a copy of your resume link and print it. Step 3. Apply for a job. There are many ways to apply with your resume link. First is browsing the job recommendations in your Jobs180 dashboard. If you are qualified, click Submit Resume Link. So what are you waiting for? Dress up your next generation resume, stand out brightly among the competitive job seekers in the market, and win the heart of your future employers using Resume Link. Miss Farah, we're back. Yes, we're back. Very timely yung pagbabalik ko after the commercial. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. So going back to my first question, ma'am, um, wanted to ask about how fake news impacted the medical industry and the entire landscape, especially that we are in the middle of the pandemic. Uh, well, of course, uh, ang impact niyan, uh, yung sa medical yung sa very recent ino yung sa covid yung maraming information about covid na kesho alam mo yon yung mga uh, ano nga yun, yung mga fake news kung ano yung nakakagamot kay covid saan galing si covid na nahirapan tayong mag uh, uh, encourage ng mga tao to have vaccinated because of this misinformation. So yun, malaking impact yun when it comes to medical society no. So yun na lang alone uh, talagang classic example that fake news really ano um ano yon um yun na nga may impact siya sa buhay ng bawat tao when it comes to decision and thinking so yun thank you for that ma'am a uh, follow up question po what would be a polite way to um convince elderly people or people who are easily swayed um with what they see online um to convince them of the facts and the truth yeah ganyan po. Oo, kasi napakahirap nung sagot mo, no? So, i-relate ko na lang din, no? Kasi, iba-iba kasi, syempre, yung tao, eh. Usually, ang papaniniwala kasi will will differ on on, on on your, number one, values. Number two is yung uh, paano ka pinalaki. Uh, religion is also has an impact. At the same time, is your um uh, yung tribe, kung may tribe man, no? Yung mga belief, kasi yun ang mahirap baliin, eh. Uh, usually pagka ganon uh, i-relate ko ulit sa medical no when it comes to gamutan like for example that uh, needs to 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 do with the patient right away pagka may mga ganong belief uh, talagang kailangan mo lang silang um, bigyan ng maraming facts no researchable facts na ito talagang ito ay in, in, inaral ho na ito ay nang, na, nakagamot at let's take for example na lang din yung vaccine di ba marami ding mga uh, senior citizen or uh, karamihan din ng mga middle-aged person ay nila magpa-vaccine, no? Um, actually, uh, I will share to you, isa rin ako doon, nung una. Ayoko talaga. <laughs> Kasi, di ba, yung zombie-zombie na yan. But, but then, you know, um, as you uh, as you see yung impact at saka yung, yung talagang, yung worst case ng COVID, you tend to, to, to research more because of the back-to-back -back, um, webinars na binibigay ni Makati Med and uh, all those uh, scholarly research na binibigay sa amin ng infection control namin, uh, you, you tend to ano to make bale and uh, ano mabago yung pananaw na meron ka. No? So I think uh, pwede rin yun na mangyari sa mga elders na, elder natin. Basta meron ka lang talagang uh, fact na ibibigay sa kanila. So yun, dahil wala naman tayong uh, story na mga namatay because of the vaccine or di ba bumaba pa nga yung case natin o o yung vaccine cannot uh, cannot uh, cure or cannot hindi ibig sabihin na hindi ka na magkaka-covid but 
you know, it will protect you with the severe ano, complications. So, so yung mga ganong bagay, yung uh, kailangan mak- makausap lang sila based on their language and their understanding, I think. So, ayun. Ayan. Thank you for that, Miss Farah. I think, last question, ah, ito. Um, coming from Miss Karina Aquino, guidance counselor po from AU. Um, what are at least two reasons why people create fake news? Bakit po ba nagkaka- nagkakaroon in the first place? Siguro, number one is uh, sa ngayon, dahil pandemya, no, para kumita. Kasi diba, the more na magsa-search doon sa, sa site na yun, uh, the more na maraming views, the more na maraming uh, nakita siya. Monetary, no, number one. Tapos yun nga, pag, uh, para uh, sumikat ka para at the same time also is uh, tawag na dito maraming pumunta doon sa ano mo sa sa site mo number two I think is to um siguro to discredit as I mentioned earlier in the lecture is to discredit yung one's uh, personal views no para mamislid ka kung ano talaga sample example is yung dito sa politics natin yung pangangandidato nila di ba so uh, you, you uh, people tend to create para ma- mabali or ma- 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 ma-persuade ang isang tao to 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 do yung kung ano yung naisip niya. So yun. I okay. Think. Thank you for that, ma'am. Last question on my end po would be career advice. So um may we ask your career, career advice for people who are in the audience po who are starting their um ano pa lang po studies or nasa middle sila ng studies nila. Ano po yung parang words of motivation niyo? So, uh, words of ano ko, advice ko no for the incomings na magiging uh, professionals na later on. Ah, uh, yun na nga, uh, wag tayong malilimitahan, wag tayong masyadong masilaw sa mabulalak, mabulaklak na mga salita, no? We really have to search, we really have to dig deeper doon sa mga nakikita natin online. Minsan kasi doon tayo natatrap, no? Uh, it, this is in relation also with the topic earlier, with the first speaker na uh, doon tayo pupunta sa mga credibles. Hindi tayo basta na lang uh, uh, tawag na dito uh, because it's pandemic, uh, hindi hindi tayo pwede mag face-to-face o kaya nakakatakot mag... Huwag kayong pangunahan ng takot because, you know, knowledge is power. Totoo yon So, kapag hindi mo kasi, uh, ano yun, um, nilagyan ng knowledge ang 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 sarili mo, more loss of track ka talaga. Ma, 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 madali ka talaga mas persuade ng kahit na sino. So, I think, uh, yon research more and uh, uh, trust your gut. No? So, yon Pagka basta... To, true, uh, true good to be true, uh, malamang sa malamang, eh hindi totoo yun. So, yun. Yeah, and thank you for that, ma'am. Coming in, follow up from Miss Karina again. Um, have you ever fallen for fake news? Ano po yun at ano po ang naging effect? <laughs> okay. Okay nga yung question na yun, no? Uh, not, uh, siguro fake news, oh, kasi uh, in the sense na disinformation, Uh, yung mga marites ng buhay natin, no? So, yung mga feed na feed na ganyan. So, uh, sabi ko nga sa inyo kanina, no? Ang impact niyan, pwedeng sa friends, sa co-workers, sa family. Pero this is a minor thing lang naman, no? Um, yon yung merong nabigay sa akin misinformation, tapos nag-react agad ako without even uh, uh, investigating or going deeper to that, ano, to that, uh, Uh, information that has given to me. So yun, nag-cost lang naman ng awa. <laughs> so yun. Yes, I fall into ano fake news, misinformation. <laughs> Ayan. Thank you for that, ma'am. So be- very relatable. Everyone can be, an, can be a victim. Yes. No? Ayan. So, um, if there are no more questions from the crowd, again, for Makati Medical Center, the link is jobsunity.com slash Makati Medical Center. That's where you see their vacancies, their openings. Um, if you want to see their positions that you want to um, apply to, maybe in the future, dyan yung siya makikita. Yeah. So to Ms. Farah, we give you the Certificate of Appreciation. So this is from the Arellano University Central Guidance Office. Um, Certificate of Appreciation is presented to Ms. Farah Visay, RN, for her incredible Uh, invaluable 
contribution as a resource speaker in the webinar entitled Responsible Netizenship, Think Before You Click, given this 3rd of February 2022, signed by AVT for Student Personal Services, Ms. Fe Caridad Gai Coriotica. Thank you, Ms. Fire. Thank you. Thank you, Den. Thank you for having me. It's, a, it's such an honor, you know. Pero ang hirap pala, no, pag wala kang kausap. <laughs> So to our audience, again, we have an evaluation link to be uh, flashed later. Before uh, Now we officially close the session. We're calling Ms. Luzviminda Alonso, RG, Luzviminda Alonso, RGC, RPM, Supervising Guidance Counselor, to give us a closing remark. Good morning, everyone. Before we end this event, I would like to express my appreciation to our guest speakers, careofjobs180.com. Thank you so much for spending your time with us this morning. And of course, to all our students who participated in the webinar. I know you learned a lot on how to become responsible netizens. I am just hoping that you will apply those things, those netiquettes that were mentioned during your online class and whenever you are online and using different social media platforms. I think we have important takeaways from the talk. One is that watch what you are saying Abuses are as unwelcome online as they are in the real world. The rule is, if you wouldn't say something in real life, then don't say it online. Another is, don't forget the golden words. Please, thank you, and sorry are as important online as they are in real life. With that, I would like to end by saying thank you again to all and stay safe, Chips. Thank you for that, Miss Ludi. So again, to our audience, please don't forget to evaluate the event. Um, the evaluation is posted on the um, AU guidance page and also in the comment section. Um, we would also like to thank Zero Group for being one of our corporate sponsors for this event. You may check them out, the CEO store in Lazada, and shop your the nearest small in your area to shop for your corporate guitar needs. And for career opportunities, it's available jobsnake.com slash CEO group. So please watch out for the next set of webinars you're hosting this week and next week. And if ever you find the, the webinar, the topics um, interesting, you are free to join in any of those sessions. So to our audience, thank you guys for lending us your time. See you and have a great day. Stay safe, guys. The clinical trial market as we know it is about to change. We're revolutionizing the current state aligned to disparate, slow and often manual processes. Optum's vision is to transform the drug development process to one that is centered and grounded in real world patient behavior and physician practice. Optum's ability to access this unique network and fold in the strongest data and analytics expertise will enable us to jointly bring life-saving drugs to the patients who need it most. Join us in this partnership to bring our shared vision for real-time, real-world healthcare research for real patients. change.
happens when you least expect it, but also when you embrace it. At Accenture, we help the world's biggest brands thrive through change. Our people combine technology and creativity, expertise and experience, learning and collaboration, passion and purpose. To make a difference for our clients, their customers, our company, and our communities. Behind every great change is a great human. Bring your skills, your curiosity, and your true self to your work every day. Let's do incredible things. Let's deliver on the promise of technology and human ingenuity.